Voting isn't just going to the polls anymore on election day. Options like early voting, mail-in voting, and ballot drop boxes are available to more voters and are growing in popularity. How to Vote is a tool created by Democracy Works, and it breaks down the options your state offers by forecasting a ballot, empowering you to decide where and when to vote. Democracy works best when we all vote, but misinformation and confusion about election procedures have resulted in low voter turnout. How to Vote takes the guesswork out of the voting process. It is easy to use and helps folks from all over the country overcome many of the process barriers to voting. It is committed to helping you vote no matter what. You can use the How to Vote tool to sign up for election reminders, see what's on your ballot, get step-by-step assistance requesting your mail ballot, explore your options for returning your mail-in ballot, check your voter registration status, and find your local polling site and make sure that you have an appropriate ID to bring with you. Decide when and where you'll vote this year at howto.vote. Hello and welcome to the formal review. Today, we will be looking at the 2018 film, Can You Ever Forgive Me? Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the review. Hello everyone and welcome back to the formal review. Now this is episode 32. And before I get started, as always, I do want to say there may be some spoilers in this, but I always try to keep the review fairly vague so not to ruin the movie for you. Now as I've said before, if you now if you really want to get everything that I say about the film, please go see it first and then come back and hear what I have to say about it. But if you don't care about that, keep listening. Can You Ever Forgive Me is a biographical film directed by Marielle Heller and written by Nicole Holopsenter and Jeff Whitty. And it is based on Lee Israel's memoir of the same name. It stars Melissa McCarthy and Richard E. Grant. Now this film follows the author Lee Israel played by McCarthy after her failure of her biography of Estee Lauder. She has hit writer's block and has become an alcoholic. And her agent is kind of ignoring her so she is forced to start selling her possession. And so then, eventually, she decides to forge letters from celebrities. She ends up working with a drug dealer named Jack Hawk, played by Grant. And that's pretty much the plot of the the story itself. It's very straightforward, mainly because it is a biopic. It is fairly engaging throughout the majority of the film. It's not a bad film by any means, but I think the real strong point of this film is Melissa McCarthy's performance. This is one of the first times she's ever done something really serious. Prior to this film, she's been mostly pigeonholed into this comedic role, which she does well, but a lot of her characters are very, very similar. And to her credit, it works a lot of the time, but she hasn't been pushed to doing really great drama roles. And this is her first attempt at that, and, that, and she does a very good job at that. And frankly, I'm looking forward to her continuing with this. It's a really decent evolution of a comedic actor. I mean, a lot of other comedic actors prior to her, when they're known as this comedic type of person, they try to become more of a serious actor. Look at Eddie Murphy or Jim Carrey. The person who really stands out in this film is Richard E. Grant. I think he plays this character who's just very interesting, to say the least. I think he does a fantastic job in this. He comes off as this very, very elegant drug dealer which I thought was a really cool character to look at and just appreciate. But the chemistry between him and McCarthy is really good, and that's what really makes this film definitely worth seeing. The main flaws of this film is that it doesn't really break any ceilings. It goes from A to Z pretty standardly, and that's, not again, not a bad thing, but it doesn't really take any risks, and it's fairly safe. But similarly to I, Tanya, what's very interesting about these types of biopics is that they really try to make people who commit these awful crimes and make you feel sympathetic toward these characters and that it sucks yeah that it got to this point in this film but there's just so much sympathy that can go across for these people because they do these really awful things and then at the end when they get put into a prison or the end of the film how am i supposed to feel bad for that i don't honestly feel too much sympathy for this character because they're essentially doing this crime throughout the entire movie so and at the end of the film i just felt honestly fairly bored because nothing happened. It went from A to Z and then that's it. Acting is great, which I think is definitely worth seeing, but you don't have to see this right away. I definitely think you could wait maybe a little while to see it, but it's not terrible. So at the end of the day, I would rate this film a four out of five bow ties. Now let me know what you thought of the film. Let me know on social media. I'm on I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. The URL is all the same. It's at the formal review. You can also check out Box Office Buzz. I do some retrospective reviews on there and also they're a really good source for 
or anything movie, video games, or music related. And I want to thank everyone just again for tuning in to the Form Review. I really appreciate it. Furthermore, I appreciate anyone who's willing to help out on a financial basis. I do this really for everyone listening. I love talking about movies and everyone who tunes in and supports me really makes it worthwhile. And if you want to help support financially, you can go to anchor.com forward slash the dash formal dash review and click support this podcast. And so you never miss an episode, please subscribe on your favorite podcasting service. We're on, and whether that be iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, you'll find us on there. And please leave a review and let me know what you all think. I am always willing to improve and grow. The reviews help with that. So please leave your thoughts on the review and I'll definitely look at it. As with all that, episodes there is music in the background i do try to provide the ambiance of the film and i do not own the rights to this music this episode's music in the background was on the can you ever forgive me original motion picture soundtrack released by verb label group on october 12 2018 and until next time i'll see you at the movies take care everyone thanks for tuning into this episode of the formal review we hope you'll join us again